Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to do Jeremy Friday for today's first video. So as was on Friday, we're having a look at the weather for the next uh, four weeks, month ahead, uh, with Japanese and CFS V2 models. Uh, running very late today, um, so I'm going to try and get the uh, week 10 day video update in as well. That will be um, quite late, sort of end of the afternoon, early evening time probably, by the time it's finished processing and is uploaded on that. Um, but I will try and get two videos in for you uh, for the next um couple of hours so uh yes jeremy Friday to start us off we're going to begin with the 500 bill bar height and omni flow charts from the jma uh from the north pole view down so this is the north pole of the uh arctic just here i've got the wider arctic circle around there uh and then mid latitudes are sort of through here uh so on this scale um we've got blue extrapolating to below average heights which is low pressure yellow orange and red extrapolate to above average heights which is high pressure uh these break down to week fit in weekly periods the first week period will take us from the 13th through to the 20th of march the coming week still looks unsettled to our north. So still a deep low pressure to our north and northwest. But jet stream is rising northwards, though. Jet stream is rising. And we've got a ridge developing sort of over and to the south southeast of the country. So it's a more anticyclonic signal. Probably still a bit unsettled, particularly for more northern and western parts of the country. Probably a little bit transitional as well. And over time... We should be starting to get more influence from the high pressure settling things down towards the south and the southeast. By the time you get through to week two, which is the 20th, 27th of March, you're well and truly dominated by high pressure then. So you've got this large area of above average heights sitting over just to the east of the country, but below average heights are being pushed further away from us into the middle of the North Atlantic. Jet streams going further northwards as well. Uh, before it plunges south or to eastern Europe. So for eastern parts of Europe and western Russia, that is probably a cold scenario. But for us, actually, we're under a ridge of high pressure. Should be relatively dry. And you would have thought by this point, pretty spring-like as well. Then we go through to week three and four, which takes us from the 27th of March through to the 10th of April. And that's going to be Good Friday as well by the way 10th of april is good friday uh so high pressure still in control so above average height still there over and just to the north of the country probably quite easily probably bringing a lot of the easterly winds with that uh which could of course be a little bit chilly especially in the eastern parts of the country but overall the emphasis is towards high pressure and dry conditions you would have thought high and dry into early april Let's confirm that for tropical and mid-latitude view. So on this view, British Isles is, is in the top right-hand corner of the chart. As you're looking at it, you can't see the North Pole and the Arctic. That's sort of off the screen, oh, off the chart up here. Um, but uh, we've looked at that view down, so we know what's going on in terms of a broader picture through the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, right, a reminder of a week one, 500 mm of our height anomaly from today, 13th of March, 20th. It's unsettled just to our northwest, lots of low pressure up there. Above average heights building in, uh, particularly more southern parts of the country, looks like it's transitioning from unsettled to rather more settled conditions. Temperature anomalies are close to or above average here in uh, this week. And also we see precipitation and knowledge still largely above average. That's particularly true for northern and western areas. So it is taking a while to settle down. I'm not sure it'll be quite that unsettled uh, as a weekly anomaly for the south and the southeast. But overall, yes, for the north and west, still taking a bit of a time to settle down. Then we go through to uh, week two, which takes us from the 20th, 27th of March. The above average heights then are over the country and to our east as well. Low pressures out to the north and west. Jet streams push northwards up here. Uh, now, temperature anomalies are significantly above average for all of us during this week. This is uh, one to two degrees uh, above average on the temperature scale. So, yes, it is a nice, mild, spring-like weekend of that area. High pressure, and it's drying out too. Still a little bit unsettled, even now, for the very far north and west of the country, for Ireland. But overall, we're shifting towards drier conditions uh, there. And then week three and four, which takes us from the 27th of March to the 10th of April, uh, has high pressure still in control, really. The above average heights range centre just to the north of the country, probably bringing a bit of an easterly wind. Also, more unsettled for Spain, low pressure 
is uh, down there across Iberia. Temperatures are lowering a little bit, actually, in this two-weekly period. That could be because we're bringing more of an easterly wind, which, of course, sort of late April, um, late March, early April, is not going to be overly warm, let's put it that way. So, uh, yes, temperatures actually lower down slightly uh, at the end of March and into the sort of first week or so of April. But it is dry, um, so the precipitation anomaly from the 27th of March to the 10th of April, Good Friday, is uh, drier than average. A lot of anti-cyclonic weather on the way in the next four weeks if the JMA is right. Let's see how the CFS V2 compares. So again, these are 500 millibar heights. And they bring it down into weekly periods. The first week period takes us from the 13th to the 19th of March. Coming week is unsettled with low pressure below average heights to our north and still bringing in a bit of an influence of a jet stream. Uh, like that as well. So it's transitioning something dry, but it does take a little while to get there. By the time you get through to week two, which is the 20th to 26th of March, high pressure then is dominated. So the next two weeks anyway, the JMA and the CFS are in good agreement that high pressure becomes increasingly influential through the second half of uh, March. Turns us much drier. And this will be pretty spring-like as well, I would have thought, with winds sort of southerly to southeast. That should be quite mild. Uh, and then we go through to week three, which is the 27th of March to the 2nd of April. And uh, this time we find that high pressure begins to start becoming a northern blocking feature. So we start to reach a high northwards, centering it over Scandinavia. But also, this is the first time you've seen this for a very, very long time. I haven't had any northern blocking this winter, but, or, or the winter just gone. Um, but uh, the above average heights are starting to extend in towards Greenland and up into the sort of Arctic and North Pole itself. This will be bringing in an easterly wind, and that could be a bit on the cold side, I have to say. The um, way that ridge, how far North Ridge is, I think the air around that ridge is going to be coming in from quite a long way north and northeast. So that would be potentially quite a cold uh, easy wind actually there, I would have thought, at the end of March. Late March is not too late for snow, remember. You can get snow at the end of March and into early April. I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but definitely that high pressure going a long way north. And so the resulting easterly would be quite a long fetch easterly from a relatively cold source. And then a big change for week four. I'm not sure about this. The JMA shows no sign of this whatsoever. But this is the 3rd to the 9th of April, running up to Easter. Then uh, we have below average heights appearing. Looks like it turns much more unsettled. And a northern blocking signal with high pressure right over the top of the pole. Uh, and so the jet stream is probably pushed southwards quite a long way. And that just looks like it could be quite a cold and wet start to April, unfortunately. I say that's running up towards east over the 9th of April would be actually Maundy Thursday, just one day short of Good Friday. But it does look quite cold and wet there as we're running up towards the Easter period with the CFS. Again, I'm not sure about that, but Jeremy shows no sign of that. So after they agree for weeks one and two, uh, they are definitely diverging then as we get through to weeks three and four. This, what we're seeing from the CFS, might be a result of the sudden stratospheric warming that's going to occur next week. We've been talking about this in videos over the past few days. We are going to get quite a dramatic warming of the stratosphere next week, seemingly, and over the Arctic. Uh, and uh, that may be what the CFS is starting to pick up on there, the results of that. Who knows? Uh, the temperature anomaly, though, for week one, going from the 13th to the 19th of March, is um, a little bit wetter than average of the far north and west of the country, but drier than average. Uh, or I should say it's a little bit cooler than average far northwest of the country, but warmer than average for much of England and Wales. So a relatively mild week coming up. And now week two is not as mild as you might have thought, given the scenario. Remember, we've got high pressure just to our east this week. It looked like we would be pulling in like a southerly to southeasterly. But the temperature normally from the 20th to 26th of March is actually a bit on the cool side, if anything. Although you don't have to go much further south and east than the UK to find warmer than average temperature anomalies. Uh, but uh, yes, it does look as though overall that's a relatively coolish week being signalled there, despite the high pressure sitting over and just to our east. And then week two, uh, week three I should say, which is 27th of March, 7th uh, to be 2nd of April. 
This one actually goes cold of an average, and of course we're bringing in that easterly then. Uh, I did say, but how far north a high pressure was ridging would we'll probably bring in quite a long fetch easterly from a relatively cold source, uh, and that's what the well, that's what the um, CFS is showing there. So quite a cold end to April, uh, quite a cold end to March and beginning to April, and then week four, which is the third to the ninth of April, that also is colder than average. So uh, actually quite a coldish four weeks coming up from the CFS, if this is right. Starting off relatively mild for England and Wales, but uh, soon reverting to something cooler. And weeks three and four in particular do look quite a lot colder there. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like April could be starting on a pretty chilly note if that's right. Temperature anomalies uh, just gone, so on to precipitation anomalies. So you see the week one precipitation anomaly taken from the 13th to the 19th of March. Wetter than average for Scotland and Northern Ireland, near normal for England and Wales. Uh, week two precipitation anomaly, which is the 20th to 26th of March, goes a bit drier than average for Scotland, near normal elsewhere. No signal for week three, which is the 27th of March to the 2nd of April. Uh, then hints at being wetter than average in week four. That's got that big trough stuck over top of the country, of course, uh, combined with northern blocking. It's the 3rd to the 9th of April. And well, it is it's week four, so it's a weak signal. But uh, it does hint at being quite, um, quite unsettled in that week uh, with above average precipitation. So, I think if you're looking for dry spring-like weather, out of the two models, the JMA is definitely the one to root for. That's definitely the one that's bringing us quite a nice spell of weather, and plenty of dry weather in the next four weeks, and relatively mild uh, as well. The CFS does look a little bit dodgy, I have to say, as we're going from March into April. Initially, they're both in line with one another, these two models, which is an increasing anticyclonic signal. But I think the difference is what the models are then do with that high pressure, where they take the high pressure. The JMA keeps that high pressure very close to the UK, uh, whereas the CFS wants to push it quite a way north. And uh, eventually stick a trough underneath it. Actually, it develops it into a normal blocking signal. Um, and it sits in a trough of low pressure underneath it. And so we finish up by the time you get through to early April in a cold and wet pattern. Uh, so the CFS may be reacting to next week's uh, sudden stratospheric warming. Who knows what the CFS is picking up on. It could be that it's just gone off on one today. This is an outlier. And tomorrow we'll see something different. We will look at the CFS weeklies again in tomorrow's week to tend to be update. And we'll see whether this is a trend that the model is starting to pick up on for the end of March into April. April or whether actually it's just one of those funny runs that they the models occasionally churn out. But definitely for the next couple of weeks, increasing anticyclonic signals. So the emphasis is still shifting towards drier weather uh, through sort of the second half of March. Both models are in agreement with that. The question mark is over where the high pressure then goes as we get to late March and into April. Right, that's it for JMA Friday this week. We'll be back later on. We'll be quite late today, but we'll be back later on with your week to send a video update. Come back for that then. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.